Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Young Man with Rins, where we share the journey of a man in simple stories. My name is Rins. Welcome to The Young Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this amazing episode. Of course, you know, my name is Rins. I'm your host. Welcome to The Young Man once again. It's Friday, and I have an amazing young man um, for this episode. His name is Isaac uh, Bilbao, and he's 16 years old. He's, um, he's an evangelist. He lives in Miami, and he loves Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not busy, please, can we give Isaac, um, the young man, welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, man. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for taking the time and thank you, man. Um, I love this, bro. I love what you do, man. What you're doing is great. I feel like many young people, especially this generation, we need it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for for those words because, you know, I, one of the interesting things that captured me, well, you know, I just saw the internet to just see people that I can interview. Uh, especially young people to come share mm-hmm. their stories and i saw you and i love jesus i love what you're doing and in my show i am not afraid to mention the name jesus you know we live come on. in a very yeah. sad um, environment and world these days you know people don't want to call the name jesus people don't want to call the name god and i saw how you are taking it taking the bull by the horn going out in cafes going out in schools to preach. yeah you know this come on and then, you know today you sent me that you sent me your um, your profile and you are 16 years old come on what what was it for you that made you to be like you know what um i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna i'm going to do this at a very young age oh man i love that question oh my goodness uh, long story short uh, first yeah. of all i want to say this how can i not be in love with jesus how can i not be in love with the man who's so in love with me and gave mm. up his life for me um mm. just really quickly a quick summary of my life and my story. Uh, I was born and raised in Miami, uh, grew up in church my whole life, you know, but let me say this. Mm. I grew up in church, but I didn't have a relationship with God. You see, mm-hmm. I thought it was just about religion. I thought it was just church. I didn't really care. You know, I was young. All mm. I wanted to do is just play my video games. <laughs> you know, I bet a lot of young <laughs> people can relate with me in that. Um, I didn't really care. Mm-hmm. Uh, long story short, uh, fast forward, uh, my dad got arrested for hitting my mom. Mm. And I remember that's so when that's where everything changed and it broke my heart. And I was so confused because my parents were pastors and I was so hurt, so mm. broken. And so my dad got arrested later on. He got deported. And since my dad was the provider of the family, we lost everything. We lost a house. We lost a car. My mom mm. couldn't pay for the bill. So we became homeless. Mm. And I remember during this time period in my life, man, uh, that hit rock bottom. Even at a young age, I was full of anxiety. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I started looking for love. And that's normal, right? We're human. We want to mm-hmm. give love and feel love. But mm-hmm. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I was looking in girls, in relationships, in money, in popularity at school. Mm-hmm. And if I'm being honest, man, I know many people can relate with me out there. Mm-hmm. Even though these things may feel good in a moment, mm-hmm. it's temporary. And look, I want to tell each and every person listening, you have a soul and you're Mm. so is eternal. You can't feel something eternal with Mm. something temporary. So Mm. I just felt so empty. I felt this void in my heart. No matter how much girls I had, no matter how much money I had, no matter how much popularity I had, I just felt this void in my heart. Mm. And it's crazy because during this time, it's like I knew about God, but I didn't know him. Mm. I knew knew him in my head, but not in my heart. So it's a big difference. you know, the funny part about my story is I love to tell people uh, I went back to church. You know, mm. I quote unquote gave my life to God. But can I say something? I didn't really fully commit. I know mm. how it is to go to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God and everything. Right. You mm-hmm. know, Monday mm-hmm. I'm flirting with every girl in my high school. I know mm-hmm. how it is to to read my Bible and just, oh, my gosh, God, I love you. The mm. Next week I'm back on that pornography website. Look, I'm being mm. real. I know how it is. Mm. I, I was living mm-hmm. in shame. Yeah. I was living in guilt. I was living in condemnation. And I hated myself. I hated everyone. I hated everything. And, and I feel like I was just at my breaking point. I don't mm. know if, if someone can relate with me that's listening. But true, true. I was sick and tired of being sick mm-hmm. and tired. Mm. And I remember uh, my sister invited me to my ch- uh, this church event. 
and I went. I didn't really want to go, but I was like, you know what? Whatever. What I got to lose, you feel me? And I mm-hmm. remember just there, I was just so broken before God. And I was so, like, hurt, so, so empty. And I said, God, you know what? God, if you're real, show me. Mm. And I remember when I said those words and when I opened up my heart to God, he encountered me with his love. And let me tell you, I felt the love of God. Something I was looking for my whole life was right there in his presence. And mm. from that day on, my life changed. And let me say this because I had encounters with God in the past. You know, I read my Bible. Like I said, I grew up in church. But yeah. what made the difference in this one is that I sustained my encounter with my mm. relationship with God. I started praying every day. I started reading the Bible. I started hanging around people who loved God. Who I started uh, going to church and just hanging around different communities. But that's when my life transformed. He set yeah. me free from depression, from anxiety, from addiction to many things. And I want to speak to every person, especially the young people. Yeah. If God changed my life, if he did it for me, I believe he can do it for you. Look, this is mm. not about religion. It's True. all about having a relationship with him. Yeah. So, yeah, hey. man, that's that's what yeah. I was saying. You know, you know, like, um, your story is very, very compelling. And I, you have so much to say. You're like, you know, a foam that has been in water for so long. And then you press it. It has lots of water that has accumulated over time. You know, you have so much to share your experiences and everything. You know, so but um, I heard you mention that um, your your dad was deported. Where are you from originally? Yes, yeah, so I was born and raised in Miami, which is America. Uh, my mom's from Nicaragua, and my dad's from Argentina, so I'm Hispanic. <laughs> oh, okay. Shout out to all my Hispanics out there. Let's go. Oh yeah. You know, um, I don't have any Hispanic friends. I don't know if it's okay. I oh wow. That. My very first. Hispanic friends. Let's go. <laughs> it's an honor. Let's go. Yeah. Do you have any Nigerian friends? A lot. <laughs> a <laughs> lot. I know many people. I know. Yeah, I love them. I love, bro. Your guys' food is just oof. Oh, wow. Flavorful. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, let me just give you a little bit of background about me. I'm from yeah, Nigeria. Sure. My name is Arinza Married. Um, I'm 20, uh, no, I'm 34. 34 and um i love jesus you know i have one child cool. and yeah i do this i love i love sharing stories i love you know i love getting people to come share their stories because i believe that we live in a world where we need to give people alternative if we keep quiet the devil is going to run people out of business the devil going to take charge and we're not going to allow that you know I- I- imagine seeing a 16 year old isaac sharing the gospel right mm-hmm. someone looking at you will be like oh okay i can do this not every time rappers with drugs or with guns and all that you know because we live in a world where um it's it, um it's filled with a lot of negative influences so yeah. i love what you're doing you are creating that positive influence in young people, and that way they could see they can be they could be preachers they could be men of god and answering the call of god for their life you know so i uh, just wanted to ask you like um who uh, these strong uh, mentors like I know like back in Africa back in Nigeria growing up we used to have we had Bunky come like sometime maybe once a year or twice a year to come do massive crusade and he was um, uh, an evangelist before he died you know so I wanted to ask are there people that you look up to and how how has it been for you like looking up to them and then shaping your ministry and your life generally 100% you know I heard this mm-hmm. quote that goes like this. Behind every great man, there's a greater mm. man. <laughs> uh, of mm. course, number one is my greatest role model, my big example, Jesus. Jesus That's my yeah. number one. You know, mm-hmm. he's, he's, you just read about him. He's just a perfect man. He's the one I, mm-hmm. I, you know, strive to be like every day. But mm-hmm. uh, with people, I got to give a huge shout out to my youth pastor. His name is Pastor Josue. Wow. Um, he was such a great role model to me. He's always been there for me. Uh, I've seen him in, in, in public and in private. He just carries this integrity. He carries this, this just love for people that I've never seen before. I remember mm-hmm. when I first came to church, he looked, he looked at me in the eye. He says, I believe in you, man. He mm-hmm. didn't even know me. He didn't even, bro, I just came to church. This man's like, I believe in you. I see God's going to do great things in your life. And he always mm-hmm. spoke encouragement. Even, not just encouragement, but he always corrected me too. And mm-hmm. I feel like many people, they think of correction, they think of something bad, but correction comes from love. Mm-hmm. So, he always corrected me. He loved me. He encouraged me. Also, my current mentors, which the name is Chris and Nicole Burgos, they've mm. always been there for me as well. They helped me. They believed in me. They taught me the word of God. Mm. And 
of course, my spiritual father, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, love that man of God. And yeah, these mm. people shaped who I am today and because of their lifestyle, because mm. of their example, because of their teachings on the word of God, mm. I am who I am today. Yeah. So how, how, um, I, I, special shout out to the people that you called out because it's, it's, they're doing amazing work, you know, in your life. So, but I just want to ask you, right, you know, we live in a world where people believe, you know, serving the Lord or saying that you're a Christian doesn't pay much. Like I grew up in Nigeria and what we see is Instagram influencers, probably they just want to be singers or rappers, you know, and also how has it been? For you being a young person and living in Miami, you know, Miami is America, yeah, where you have yes. the top entertainers like the Rick Cross and all, all of all those guys, right? You know, living in that environment, how has it been for you? Has it been tough, you know, living in that environment and saying that, you know what, I want to be a preacher? Yeah, so number one, um, it's crazy because. Even though America, especially like California, Miami, New York, we're mm. known for having celebrities, for having rich people and things like this. But mm. let me say this. And then, well, first of all, sadly, even because my sister, I was speaking to my sister, my sister Sanaya the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. She told me that a Korean, a Korean artist, that he committed suicide. Wow. And there's many people that commit suicide, even though they're rich and famous. Uh, let me say this. It's crazy because even celebrities that are famous, mm. they're millionaires, they're rich, they still commit suicide because they're not satisfied or happy in life. Mm. And and it's crazy because at a point in life, I was, you know, money wasn't a struggle first, but even then, I, I still felt empty. And it breaks my heart because I see so many people, especially in America, they, they strive after the American dream. They strive after getting rich, getting known, having this, having a lot mm -hmm, of girls, mm -hmm. having the nicest car, having mm -hmm. the nicest house. But those things can't satisfy you. And I'm not saying those things are wrong. Like, yes, mm -hmm. we're called to be prosperous. It's amazing. The Bible mm -hmm. speaks about it. But that, those things in itself can't satisfy. Mm -hmm. And I'm living in this environment. And my heart is to show that the Bible says Jesus is the way it should be in life. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. key. And also, it breaks my heart because so many people reject Jesus, you know, yeah. and, and they choose other things. But I, 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 I recognize and I realize this through my experience. It's my job to preach the gospel, but it's not for them to receive it. Mm. I can, I can share my heart. I can do all these things, but it's a personal decision everyone has to make. True. And, and yeah, so I just, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of confusion, even mm. in a in a world full of hopelessness, mm -hmm. I believe that God calls us. Jesus says. You are the light of the world. You are the mm. salt of this earth. So even though we're in this craziness, uh, we're called to be the example. Even as a young person, we're called to be the light. We're called to be the salt of the world. Look, when people look at a Christian person, or when people look at a person that follows Jesus and that loves Jesus, mm. they should tell. They they If they can't tell that there's something different about you, True. I doubt that you even have a relationship exactly. with God. Exactly. So we're called to be the light. We're called to be the difference. And notice, so many people want to fit in. But we're not mm. caught to fit in. We're caught to stand out. Mm. So that's that's what I realize in, in mm. living in this area, and I take it as an honor and a mm -hmm. privilege to to just share my heart mm. and just to even at a young age be the example to others. Mm. Do you get do you get discouraged some, sometimes? If I were to say no, I'll be lying to you. <laughs> of course, you know mm. every great man and woman of God in the Bible got discouraged. Mm. You know, discouragement is part of life. Jesus says in John chapter sixteen verse. 33, that you will have trials and troubles in your life, mm -hmm. but take heed because I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus never promised us that we're not going to go through trials. Yeah. But he did promise us that he's going to be with us mm -hmm. during those trials. So there's some times I got discouraged. And there's mm -hmm. some times that, you know, I fell down. There's some times I didn't feel like preaching. I didn't feel like going to uh, pray. I didn't feel like reading the Bible. I didn't feel like doing nothing. But let me say this. The reason, you asked me earlier, why do I do what I do? And it mm -hmm. connects back to this. The mm -hmm. reason why I do what I do is because I love God. And mm -hmm. people say I love God, but their life don't match up to that. You know, True. the word like, love is not an emotion. Love is not a feeling. Love mm -hmm. is a decision. Mm -hmm. So whether I feel it or not, whether I, whether, no, I love him because of who he is and because I love him, I choose to do these things for him. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. Like I said, I don't believe in God because I go to church. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in God because of my parents. I believe in God because I experienced him and I, and I, and I've seen him for myself. 
Mm. So I believe that if he changed my life, like I said, he could do it for anybody. And mm. let me ask like you a question and people that are listening. Yeah. If if I were to give you the cure to cancer, would you keep it to yourself? No. Nah. No, right? If mm. I were to give you ten billion dollars, would you keep it to yourself? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You see, we carry something better and greater than a cure to cancer. We carry something better than ten billion dollars. We carry the good news of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We carry the gospel. So when that, when God's love becomes my greatest reality, it's mm -hmm. impossible to keep my mouth shut. And even though I get discouraged at times, even mm -hmm. though some days, you know, I fall or whatever. I get back up and I just run to him mm. and I just continue going. Yeah, I keep on persevering. Yeah, so, they, yeah man. you know, I, I thank you for that. Um, what if, right? You know, th thinking about it, like I'm thinking, I'm saying, you know, I am shy, mm -hmm. right? I am. I I don't have confidence. You know, like I, I watched one of your videos. You were like, okay, let me just show you how to share um, the word of Jesus. You enter this restaurant, you'll be like, hello, ladies and gentlemen, can I get your attention? All right, Jesus yeah. loves you. He started talking. Someone, one of your team was with the camera. You could do that. Now, a lot of people listening, young people, maybe 16, your age, you know, 18, 20, even 30 or something. But fear is holding them back. What do you have to t tell them? Let me say this, and this connects back <laughs> to, to, to love. Okay, let me say this. I'll give you a few points. Mm. Uh, not a lot of people know, but I'm actually writing a book on this. On overcoming fear and how to preach the gospel but i will say this number one mm. boldness and confidence comes from being and knowing jesus mm. there's a story in the bible and i will just really summarize it really quick uh yeah. peter and john which were disciples of jesus they're preaching mm -hmm. the gospel people got saved they heal a man with uh he couldn't walk he healed them and the what's it called they got arrested and mm -hmm. they stood before the court they stood before the religious leaders and whatever and and the religious leaders saw this they said this uh they said this they saw the confidence and boldness of peter and john and they grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained meaning ordinary uh they were mm. like normal men mm. and the bible says they were astounded and began to recognize that they have been with jesus, jesus. you see yeah because of their boldness and confidence mm -hmm. the bible says they realized that they have been with jesus mm. and and i want to say this Boldness is a byproduct from being with Jesus. Boldness mm. is a byproduct from having a relationship with God. Because let me say this. When you develop a relationship with God, you start to love what he loves and hate what he hates. You see, mm -hmm. God hates sin, but he loves people. Yeah. So you won't let fear get in your way. And, and let me say this. Number two, boldness comes from love. The Bible says there's no fear in love, but mm. perfect love casts out all oh, fear. Oh, so oh. when his love becomes real to you, bro, <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't keep my mouth shut. The True. Bible also says in 2 Timothy 1.7 that he didn't give us a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of love, power, and a sound mind. Mm. And it's just, you know, people say, how can you be so bold? And I tell them, how can I not? Yeah, how can you not? <laughs> Jesus saved mm. me. He, he changed my life. He's real. He's real to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just an automatic thing that I can share it. Mm -hmm. And also, that's spiritual, but naturally, how can I overcome Fear. Mm -hmm. Simple. You guys ready? Just do it. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. do it. It's mm -hmm. that simple. I feel like so many people look for a, a mm -hmm. crazy, complicated uh, mm -hmm. a response. No, just do it. The same way, like, <laughs> um, you, you learn by doing it. So mm -hmm. you just do it. You go out. Maybe, I don't know, you want to ask that special girl, you know, just do it. <laughs> maybe you want to maybe you want to be friends with this person. How, what mm -hmm. I do, just do it. Just go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So... That's what I was saying. And I, and I tell people all the time, everybody has an evangelist inside of them. And that got true. me thinking, it's true because, look, if people can share their favorite places to eat, if people mm -hmm. can share the, that new movie that just came out, if mm -hmm. the girls can share and, and talk about that new makeup product that came out, they can talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple couple weeks ago, my good friend Louis took Peter and I and Abraham out to go eat in this restaurant called Texas de Brazil. This thing is so good, like, <laughs> the, the 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 meat is like you cut it it's like butter it's, mm. it's insane delicious meat delicious food and i was like wow this is so good i got it to my family about it i got it to my friends about it and if you're anyone if you're someone like me you're gonna post about it on your instagram on your facebook <laughs> um take a picture you know mm -hmm. and then and i felt like god spoke to me he said mm -hmm. it's the same with me when you experience when you taste my love it's a natural response to just share it wow so that's what I was saying, man. Just be rooted in God's love. 
Mm-hmm. And number three, boldness comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. One of my favorite Bible verses, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it mm-hmm. says, Jesus said to the disciples, he said this, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you mm-hmm. be my witnesses telling about me, telling people about me everywhere. Mm-hmm. So three things, it comes from relationship with God, it comes mm-hmm. from it comes from the Holy Spirit and it comes from his love. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Man. <laughs> amazing. So um the um do you have um plans for um okay before I ask you that question, so I wanted to ask, right? How do you deal with you know um the female attention? I don't know if you're in a relationship or you're married now, but as a young man preaching the gospel, you probably get the female attention, right? How do you deal with that to make sure that you stay focused? So you said the feeling of attention or wait. female, They're like girls, you know, how do you oh, deal with that? Oh, got you. <laughs> yeah, so, well, let me speak to all my men, even women out there. <laughs> There's always going to be temptation, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But what I tell people, and I love to tell a lot of young people in advice in this area, it's before you look for, before you look for a relationship, focus on your relationship with God. Because mm-hmm. you can't give something you don't have, right? Mm-hmm. I would I wouldn't go up to a homeless man and ask for a million dollars because he can't give something he doesn't have. True, you true. can't give love if you don't have love. So mm-hmm. the Bible says God is love. So I focus on my relationship with Him, and not just that, but I feel like so many people overcomplicate it and over spiritualize it. The one, you know, have you ever heard the saying, the one, the, like the one for me, my other half, my soulmate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as that. You see, mm. the one for you is the one you choose. Straight mm. up. And there's no such thing as the other half. Bro, mm-hmm. we're called to be complete. We're called to be a whole. We're called mm-hmm. to be, you know, you know, like a whole person, not half. God didn't create us <laughs> half. He creates his whole. So mm. what I tell people is focus on your relationship with God, number one. And number two, there's nothing wrong with finding people attractive. And there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with liking someone. Like, if I'm being transparent and real with you, uh, right now, this moment, me and this girl are talking. She's an amazing woman of God. She's yeah. she's very beautiful. I, I really care for her. And what mm-hmm. did I do? You know, I feel like us us men, we love mm-hmm. to jump and do things quickly. Like, oh yeah, true, let's get true. into this relationship. <laughs> but I said, hold up. I don't want to make decisions off my off my emotions. True. I want to make decisions off God's wisdom. So mm-hmm. what I did is that I gave her a couple months. And I first of all, first point, I got mm-hmm. to know her as a friend. Because let me say this. Friendship is the foundation of your relationship. True, true, true. So I decided to know her as a friend and not acting all flirty, not acting all weird, but getting to know her as an actual friend. Mm-hmm. And then and I started, what do you think? You know, number two, I started praying about it, asking God about it. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Number three, I started being accountable to my leaders, to my mm-hmm. mentors, to those that I trust, my parents, and then let them you know, speak about it, let them know. And mm-hmm. number four, I just wait on the Lord. Just mm-hmm. wait, you know. It can be God's will, but it has to be his timing as well. Exactly. So right now, mm-hmm. I'm a young person. I'm still in school. I'm working. So it wouldn't be wise for me to get in a relationship right now. Mm-hmm. We like each other and everything, but we spoke with each other. And we said, you know what? We're going to wait. And mm-hmm. for now, we're going to be friends. And we're going to have fun. You know, mm-hmm. and just because you're waiting doesn't mean you're stopping. So mm-hmm. that, I know like that's kind of like <laughs> not really what you asked me, but just some advice no, in that No, no, area. that's the truth. You know, that's the truth. You know, I, I love your perspective because a lot of people go into something premature and then they exactly. kill the purpose. You know, they kill the friendship, they kill mm-hmm. the relationship before they even get to a particular point. And at the end of the day, they lose the friendship. They That's lose right. the relationship. They lose the person at the end of the day. Like what you're doing is noble. What you're doing is noble. I mean, I've I I, I you know my past like I, I used to look back, I, I I tell myself, I wish I didn't get into that relationship with that lady because we could yeah. have been friends now, right? But because you've been in a premature relationship, you've lost the relationship, you love the friendship, and then you've lost the person. I can't even call the person anymore. Do you understand? Yeah. Because I entered a um, premature, and that's what you're trying to do. You know, try to delay gratification, you know, trying to hold up, you know, like you talked about, is God's will. But you have to do it in God's timing, and that is very Come profound. Come on, yes, mm. amen, amen. That, that's that is very profound. So, um, do you have plans for tours, like coming to Nigeria, coming to the UK? You know? I would love to. You, you know, know, it's my heart to to travel, especially mm. to Africa. Mm-hmm. I would love to go to Europe. I love I love traveling. It's my heart, and I know God knows that. Yeah, yeah for sure. 
Yeah. So if, whenever you try, you, I, 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 like I told you, I, I live in the UK, based in England. So if you try coming, just come around. Let's go to the city center and share the gospel. You know, just do it, take it to the street, like the way you do in Miami. You know, I mean, I do, what part yeah. of UK do you live in? I, I live in the northwest. It's called Preston. It's okay. a very nice place, you know. I I've been here going to two years now. Wow. You know, I yeah. would love to visit one day. Hey, you gotta hook me up with the good places to sleep, uh, stay at, good places to eat. I would sure. love to go. <laughs> I, I've told you, you're my friend now. So <laughs> what are our friends for? <laughs> Man, let's go. <laughs> you know. So um, how is it like? How do you schedule? Um, how do you plan? Because I'm trying to wrap up the interview. So how do you? put a balance to your life so you have school you mm -hmm. have work then you have your personal life and then you have of course you know ministry how do you um balance up and then share your time you know in such a way that it doesn't clash with each other and every part of your life is fruitful yeah i love that i love that question mm -hmm. uh, let me say this when your seasons change sometimes your priorities change mm -hmm. When your seasons change, sometimes your priorities change. I'll give a great example. During summer, mm. I had no school, mm. no homework, and I didn't have a job at that time. Uh, bro, I was spending three, four hours just with God, reading the mm. Bible, watching sermons, enjoying it, going out with friends. But then when school started, I had school. Mm. And I was like, dang, that cut off half my time. So mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, school and then with God and like that. And then guess what? I had work now. And mm. plus adding ministry. Um, and mm. I was like, this is getting chaotic, you know? So what mm. I have to do is, what I have to do is know my priorities. Mm -hmm. For example, um, and let me say this, when people think of balance, they think of like, okay, um, let me put 25 here, 25 here, 25 here, 25. No, that's not mm. how balance looks like. Balance looks like, like, it, for example, I wouldn't go, uh, let me see. I wouldn't, <laughs> let's say I'm hanging out with friends and mm -hmm. I, and I have a basketball. I'm not going to. You know, shoot the ball, then I don't know where to start praying. And <laughs> no, mm. it's, it, it depends what you're doing and, and where you're at in life. So for mm -hmm. me personally, how do I keep my balance? I understand and know my priorities. Mm -hmm. For example, number one, first above everything is God. It's mm -hmm. my relationship with Him. Then number two, it comes family. Mm -hmm. it, it, those are my important things family, friends. Yeah. Then I have school. Then mm -hmm. I have ministry. Then I have social media. So I just know and I discern, you know. What's for what? And also something that really helps me balance my life is scheduling. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm not saying be, be, be perfect because perfection is a killer of consistency. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is just plan your life out. The Bible says uh, you mm -hmm. make the plans, but God will direct your steps. So mm -hmm. I have a calendar. I write down everything. I wrote down when I have this interview, you know, mm -hmm. tomorrow I have a, a, a youth service. And then, you know, on Saturday, I have this, you know, bi uh, not business meeting, this meeting with uh, the leadership of my church. And on mm -hmm. Sunday, I have, you know, uh, church and Monday, I have school. So I plan it out. Mm -hmm. I, I do things. And sometimes I got to sacrifice other things that I want to do for this. But you just plan it out mm -hmm. and you just understand and know your priorities. That's what I would say. And mm -hmm. also, let me say this. Yeah. You are at best when you are at rest. Rest mm -hmm. is so important. I tell people my work ethic is insane. But mm. my resting is also insane. So mm. we need to understand that we have to rest. Because if you ain't resting, if you're not taking care of yourself spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically, you won't mm. operate. Our bodies are vehicle. Imagine mm. if I did, I don't know, I was up and I worked every day, you know, 17 hours a day. Bro, I'm going to be burnt out. So True. we need to understand a rest. For me, some of my rest days are Fridays or Saturdays. So take that time to rest, spend time with family, spend time with loved ones. And mm. understand your priorities and plan it out. Schedule it. Buy a calendar. Buy a planner. So mm. that's what I'll say. And that's what helped me as a young person, even with mm. a busy schedule. Mm. Nice. Thank you so. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna ask you this last question, right? Young people, young people, they are listening, right? <gasps> I just want you to just give them last words because I believe it pays to serve the Lord, especially at a very young age. Yes. It pays. Yes. And let me just tell you a little bit about me. I started campus ministry immediately. I got into the university, right? I did campus ministry. I am a living example of God's goodness because Man. all the prayers that we prayed in campus, all the evangelism that we did, everything is paying off now. 
because mm. I can now pray for my family. I can pray for my wife. I can pray for my son. Right? I can pray for my sister. I can pray for my mother-in-law. I can pray for the house because I have developed that relationship with God. And then, of course, knowing how to deal with things in the place of prayer. So I just wanted to just say a word. Just let them know they are not missing out. Because Guys, I, yes. Yeah, I think one of the greatest issues for young people right now is that they feel they are missing out. And, you know, the social media makes it very, very instant, instant. Everything is instant. You know, you go to McDonald's, the drive through um, you order, um, you know, the cheeseburger. You go to the other side, it's ready, you know. Um, you put, you pop something in the microwave in two minutes, it's ready. But that is not life, you know. I just want to just say words regarding, you know, instant gratification and don't making them understand that they are not missing out. You know, just say something around that. Just last words. Yes. So let me say this first of all. Mm. Um. Hmm. I understand because when I was young, younger. When I was younger, mm-hmm. I used to say this. You know what? I'll mm-hmm. go to God later. You know what? Yeah. Let me let me serve God. Let me enjoy life. Enjoy what? You can't mm-hmm. enjoy sin. And I just want to say this. Only Jesus can satisfy you. Mm-hmm. Sin, drugs, money, sex, popularity. None of these things will satisfy you. Only Jesus. And let me say this. You were created to have relationship with God. Mm-hmm. God loves you and he wants relationship with you. Maybe you heard this whole interview. Maybe you believe in God. Maybe you don't believe in God. Whatever the case may be, I want to mm-hmm. tell you that God loves you and he wants relationship with you. The Bible mm-hmm. says that every man has fallen short of God's glory. The oh, Bible yeah. says every man sinned. Everyone mm-hmm. sinned. And the Bible also says that the consequences of sin is hell. Mm. And let me tell you, my friend, there's either two places where you go, heaven or hell. And I'm not trying to scare nobody, but this is the reality. You mm-hmm. know, there's a heaven and there's a hell. And this is bad news. Because the Bible mm. says everyone sinned and the consequence of the sin is hell. Mm. And the Bible says sin is what separates us from God. But mm. let me tell you something that's good news. You know, many people tell me, Isaac, if God is so good and loving like you talk about, then why did he send people to hell? Let me tell you. God does not send people to hell. Your own sin does. True. You see, God gave us a way out, and the way out is named Jesus. He mm. sent his son Jesus to go on a cross to mm. die for our sins, to die mm. as us, and to overcome it. Yeah. So let me tell you, there's a way out, and his name is Jesus. Mm. He loves you. He wants relationship with you. This mm. is not about religion. This is about relationship. True. And, and let me say this. I made many dumb decisions in my life, dumb, mm. stupid decisions. But the greatest decision I ever made it's not just believing in God, but making the decision to follow him mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Oh, so yeah. I want to tell you, choose Jesus, follow him, love mm-hmm. him, read your word, uh, surround yourself with people who love God. And mm-hmm. let me say these last two things. Be careful what you watch, be yeah. careful what you listen to, and be careful who you surround yourself with because those three things have an mm-hmm. influence over you. So God loves you. You have a purpose. Don't give up. God loves you so much and just continue going in. Yeah, thank you Everything so is fun in Jesus. Thank now, you. Thank you, thank man. You. Before you leave, I want you to just pray for people. Yes, let's do you it. Just, you just a word of prayer, you know, for someone that just want to give his life to Christ. I don't yes. know when they will listen to this. The recording is there anytime. It might be in the next five years they will listen to this. It might be in the next 10 years. We don't know. But I just want to just pray for someone. Let's do it. You know, yes. just, just a word of prayer, please. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. guys, maybe you heard my testimony. Mm. Maybe you heard this and you're saying, you know what? I want what you have. I want to commit my life to Jesus. I don't want religion. I don't want rituals. I don't want routines. Mm. I want a relationship with God. If that's you, wherever mm. you are, I just want you to repeat these words. And don't repeat it because I'm telling you to repeat it because you want to. Mm. I want you to say wherever you are. Just say, Father God, mm. today, today, I come to you. Come to you. I know I'm not perfect, but you are. You are. Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. Come into my heart. My and show me that you're real. I repent, I repent of all my sin. All my sin. And today, today I, make I make a decision. Not just to believe in you, just to believe but in to, you. Follow you to follow you for the rest of my life. Of my life. Have my heart mm-hmm. and have my life. In Jesus' name, oh, Jesus. amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the words. It's really, really impactful. You know, thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this episode. And of course, you know, 
every Friday, we bring guests to just share the highs and the lows and all the things, regarding all the things they do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just see you next Friday. Thank you, man. Friday. God bless right. you guys. Yeah, Thank bye. <laughs> wow, that was an amazing session with our guests today. I want you to also know that The Young Man with Rings is available on all streaming platforms every Friday. If you enjoyed this episode, kindly share, subscribe, and comment. See you next Friday. I remain your humble host, Rins. Uh -huh.